have you ever had the urge to blind your neighbors? Phone home to the mothership. Help land the 787. So no, we're not trying to blind anybody. I don't want to light up the sky. It's just nice to have some LEDs under the camper. Bring the dog out at night. Match some themes for holidays or whatever. And I wanted something dimmable. Didn't go all expensive, didn't get anything crazy. Independently controlled LEDs. I don't need a light show. I just want some ambient light under the trailer that I can dim. So I'm gonna show you step by step what I did here, how much everything costs. And uh, let's get going. What I got here is a cheap kit of LEDs off of Amazon, and I got some extension wire. The kit came with five rolls of 16 foot LED strips, and I bought the extension wire so I can get all the leads up to the power supply and controller. So as a test, I took a strip of my old LEDs that were new here, stuck it to the coroplast under there about three months ago, just to see if it'd stick and stay. It's held up pretty good. So I think that's what we're gonna run all the way around the perimeter underneath here. I'm gonna have to daisy chain a little bit on the back, but let's get going on this and see how it looks. Since we have a drop frame, I wanted to break these up into a few different sections and run leads back, because the longer you chain together, the weaker the lights will get at the end of the strip. So by running separate power lines to each of them, we should get equal brightness across the whole bottom of the trailer here. First I gotta measure, see how long of leads I need to solder onto the end of the wires. I'm gonna have to drop some of this to fish the wires through, which will be fun, but this old strip seemed to hold on pretty good. It's not to say it won't fall off eventually, but we'll see. All right, let's get some measurements. <laughs> now I was gonna do front and back, but I think I'll just do the sides. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough strip if I wanna put one in the slide. Or maybe we'll just skip the slide. I'm sorry about the fuzzy mic today, but it's a little windy. All right, so this is what we have in the kit. Got some helper brackets. I might throw a few of those here and there. This is some added protection. Get the controller. Now I went with the 12 volt setup so we can run it directly off the house battery. So we don't need this power supply. And then we got five rolls of LED strips. Now, I think this set was about 30 bucks up on the screen but so we got five rolls I think they're each 16 feet a little under 16 feet now they have these ends on them so you can chain them together what we're gonna do though is I'm gonna cut these ends off and that's where I'm going to solder the wire into this heat shrink it. That way I can plug and unplug the lights when I need to take down the coroplast. If I need to take the coroplast down. Alright, so let's get going on the wire here. We know we need to cut up a few strips and get the solder in. 
then we'll climb underneath and start sticking up some strips. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> soldering iron handy but maybe you have a friend or you can just do it the old fashioned way and splice wires together and twist them but you're always better off soldering if you can. soldering the rest of these up, make these leads, and then we'll come back and start installing some uh, LEDs. So today has really been a difficult day for filming with the wind, snakes, I'll get to that later. Neighbors, noise, planes, they're building a bridge over there, so yeah, it's been a fun day. So I'm going to get some soldering done here. i just got a few leads to go up, then I'll take you underneath and show you what we're doing. I think the idea with the LEDs is just uh, some ambient light. I think it's nice. It looks nice. I like it. Some people hate it. That's fine. I'm going to solder these ends on. First time I went to climb underneath the trailer today, there's about a five foot black snake right when I threw down the yoga mat, decided to say hello to me. So now, every time I go under there, I'm paranoid looking for a snake. Gotta love Florida seen a snake in Michigan in years. Another thing I'll say, this has absolutely been a nice park. A little tight. First thing this morning, our neighbors brought us over cookies, which I can say has honestly never happened anywhere. Our other neighbor came over and offered her help, offered if I needed anything. It's been quite nice. touch and I'm just gonna tape them together. Just like I said, there's no way to get heat shrink on all these little individual wires. But just so you know, this little guy comes out to make that female. You can stick that in there. Now it's male. They snap together arrow to arrow. Uh, I'm worried 
whenever you have a junction like this, just take one of these little cases. That locks them together. Like so. So under here, I need to clean. I've been using acetone, but you could use rubbing alcohol, other things. You wanna make sure when you're adhesive, there's a clean place to stick to. here yes we're still old school with one battery I have all the leads run up here I'm gonna solder these plug ends on then I got a nice bar right here to hook up for power screw over here for ground I'm gonna run a switch up here I'll show you in a second next to the front cap LEDs and uh, I'll get back with you after some solder in here running back to the front and rears. Let's place them together into two sections here. So this is what we got, two plugs. Go into this controller, cheap, cheap controller that came with it. And I made up a harness here. So I bought a waterproof switch that I was gonna install next to the front cap switch. But after looking at it and thinking about it, I'm gonna find a double switch and replace that one so I don't have two different style switches next to each other. Yeah, I'm that picky. <laughs> but anyway, made the switch, made up a wiring harness, positive, negative. It's placed on the plug that goes into this. So, a nice bar over here. Let's see if I can give you guys a shot. Just gonna get some power off one of those studs right there. Nice and simple. And there's a ground screw over here. Put a little eye on the end. And my fuse holder that'll go right next to the, the bar. So if there is a short, it'll pop right there. And get this hooked up and uh, should be good to go.
fast forward seven months. We're in Michigan right now. We travel from Florida out to Utah and all the way across the country back to Michigan right now. And no, I haven't seen a snake since I left Florida. I wanted to give an update, tell you how they're holding up and uh, some incidents we've had and uh, my opinion on how they work. I got a crazy story I'm gonna tell you here in a minute. But I'm gonna climb under here and show you how I connected these and why I connected them the way I did. Show you some damage we took and then I'll give my opinion. All right, so right here is a connector. This is coming out from underneath the coroplast. How many times have I said that in this video? Connecting, you can see they're holding up really good. There's the other side over there. I don't know if you can really see it from here, but I'm really surprised how well they've held up. I'll give you a shot up front where we took some damage when we ran over a tire, or a chunk of tire anyway. So I wanted to show too that I put a photoelectric sensor out here instead of going with the switch. The switch is on the inside. I think it works nice. It turns on automatically. They call them uh, dusk till dawn switches also, but it works great. I don't have to worry about turning them off in the morning, turning them on at night. So we were getting off an exit. We were in the exit lane and a semi was passing us. Right when his rear trailer tires got to the front of the truck, we heard a boom. I don't know if his tire popped or if he just ran over a chunk. Shot it right underneath the front of the truck, heard it go under the truck, all the way down the truck, and then heard the bangs when it hit the trailer. There was nothing I could do, no time to react. It was literally 10 feet away from the front tire of my truck. We did take some damage on the front door. It's a little, kind of see where it hit there. But underneath, it did rip down some of the LEDs. So I took some uh, Gorilla Tape and just kind of taped it up. That's held pretty well for now. Now, I've seen friends that uh, will poke little holes on each side of the LED and run some zip ties or wrap it around, you know, inside the Coroplast. Other people I've seen stick silicone behind it, cock, just to help hold them up. This has actually been holding up really well. I'm, uh, I'm impressed. So my thoughts on the cheap kit and doing it this way. I wanted to try something cheap first because I didn't want to spend a lot of money on it and, I'm, and I also wanted to show it could be done really cheap. My thoughts, I absolutely love them. They've been great and here's why. I'll show a picture of our campsite here. We were in a brand new park in Utah. I'm not going to drop any names here, but I brought the dog out one night. The first night we were there, didn't have the underbelly lights on because it's kind of dark out there. I didn't want to offend anyone or anything like that. I'm, I'm pretty conscious of people don't like them a lot. I try to keep them as dim as possible. But here's the thing. So I brought the dog out one night. No lights on outside, pitch black. She's sniffing around and she jumped like there was something, bug, whatever. You know, and she does it all the time, cricket or whatever, but I was not expecting what happened. I turned on my flashlight to see what she was jumping. The ground was crawling. Uh, we were on a cement slab. I can't even put a number on it, but I couldn't have taken a step without stepping on a cockroach. Literally, the ground was moving. I was terrified, took the dog in, ran right back outside, turned on the underbelly lights as bright as I could, instantly. They scattered. It, it, it was amazing to see it in action. They literally scattered and ran. The rest of the time we were there, I'd see random ones crawling around here and there. I sprayed everything, sprayed their hoses, everything. And uh, we never got one inside. And we checked and checked and checked because I was terrified. The wife was freaking out. It, it was horrible. So they work and uh, anybody that says that they don't work or they're annoying, I'm sorry, but I'm leaving them on from now on because in my experience, they really work. So let me know in the comments below what you think. It's, uh, it's one of those things, some people hate them, some people are annoyed by them. Personally, I think they look good. It's great when they have get-togethers. We never turn our cap lights on in campgrounds unless there's a special event or something like that. But the underbelly lights, they're nice. They give a, a nice ambiance, um, mood lighting, I guess you could say. But if you've enjoyed this video, 
or it helped you in any way, or if you just disagree, leave a comment below and hit that like button. Thanks. Thanks.